Hi, this is Jeffrey Kafad with Facilitate Better, offering you a five-minute review of the Workshop Survival Guide by Rob Fitzpatrick and Devin Hunt, subtitled How to Design and Teach Workshops at Work Every Time. But that's a pretty big claim, but I can tell you as an experienced instructional designer and workshop facilitator that I think it's probably true. Uh, one of the things that I like about this book is that both of the authors say that they're not claiming that their approach is the only way, they're claiming that their approach is a very good way. And as they say, it's good because it's simple, it's reliable, and it works. And that is true for the book uh, pretty much throughout. It's divided into two sections, workshop design essentials, and the second part is facilitation essentials. Throughout the book, they are going to take you through uh, very prescriptive advice and step-by-step, -step, both from an instructional design of the workshop itself, as well as how to facilitate the gathering once it has been convened. Very practical, very nuts and bolts. Um, it's almost like having a tour guide holding your hand and giving you the instruction that you are going to need to be able to complete the next step in an overall process that they've designed. One of the things that really stood out for me is the notion that the workshop itself, it's a contract. It's a contract between you as a presenter and the participants. And if we violate that contract um, by not delivering enough value quickly enough, that the participants are gonna grow suspicious of us. And that is going to then be a kind of a dynamic that hangs over the entire process and the entire workshop. I think when you apply the thinking in the workshop survival guide, you're not gonna to have to worry about violating that contract because um, Fitzpatrick and Hunt give you some very, very specific advice that is going to allow you to deliver value fairly quickly. A few of the takeaways that really stood out for me is that, you know, what's important is not to only decide what's in the workshop, but also what is out. So making that distinction about what's out and what's in and really doing a great job pruning and editing in the initial design will allow you to kind of expand in real time the conversation that people seem to most have the energy around. The mistake that we make when we ask participants to do a task or to engage in an activity, and we present it kind of as the Roman numeral in the outline, but in reality, what we're asking them to do has lots and lots of steps, lots of letters, lots of, um, you know, ones and twos and little a's and little b's, and we don't necessarily prepare them adequately to that. I'm a big believer that the slide design uh, should come after the fact. And so designing a program, a workshop that you're doing in PowerPoint kind of takes you down a perilous path in my estimation. So I appreciate the author saying that the slides design should serve the content and that your content should never be fluffed out to fill out the template. Um, design the program, look at the content, decide the myriad of ways that you can amplify that content visually. And then for those which you make slide your option, design those with great intent and care. Noticing that if you want to influence the workshop crowd or the group of participants in the whole, you're sometimes going to be better off doing that by focusing on individuals um, and not trying to treat everyone as kind of this amorphous body that you can move with your facilitation skills. And then finally, and gosh darn it, I've made this mistake so many times, I was glad to see that it's a reminder. Um, if you, particularly if you have a, a large number of participants, if you're going to be dividing them into small groups and then having them engage in an activity, it's best to get the groups formed fully and then start to talk to them about what you're going to have them do. If, if you don't do that, what will happen if you give the instructions up front for the exercise and then you go to divide the groups? It, while you're still dividing some of the groups, other participants have already formed, they're gonna start doing the activity and then you're gonna to have to interrupt them and try to get their attention back. So that's the type of super practical, um, very useful, easily applied information that you're gonna find in the book. And the final thing that I thought was really useful, for, particularly for people who maybe are less experienced facilitators, is that you, know, you have a workshop design, you have an agenda, you have an outline, maybe it's even information that you've shared with all the participants. Participants are not there to have you follow the outline specifically. I mean, analytical nuts and bolts people may be checking off boxes as we go through and you're gonna have to manage 
that reality if you start to um, bob and weave a little bit. But participants are there to get the value of the workshop overall, the learning experience and the outcomes that you specified in the description. So they're looking to get to the final destination if we want to think about this from a road trip analogy. They're not necessarily relying on you to take them through the exact initial path if you encounter detours along the way. Um, and detours are going to show up. And so part of what we need to do as workshop presenters and facilitators is to prepare ourselves not only to present, but I'm more fond of saying um, we need to prepare to be present. And I think the Workshop Survival Guide is one of those books that gives you such useful foundational information that it's going to increase your confidence that whatever comes up during the workshop, you probably have the capability to call an audible, pivot as necessary, and to guide people down a new path to that value that you were hoping to create. Very useful book, easy read, lots of practical information, 200 pages, um, highly recommend. Even if you're an experienced workshop facilitator like myself, you're gonna find lots of little tips and techniques. And if nothing else, it's gonna remind you of some things that are useful that maybe you filed away in the back of your memory.